Hi guys, so today I wanted to talk to you guys about 13 Reasons Why the Netflix adaptation. So I have read the book. It's been a little while since I read the book. It is a book that very much impacted me when I was in middle school and high school. It means a lot to me. So going into this Netflix adaptation, I had low expectations kind of because of the recent series of unfortunate events adaptation. Um, I didn't do a review for that because everybody had already done it by the time I finally finished. I was not very happy with the end of the season so far for that one, but all of that doesn't matter. We're here to talk about 13 Reasons Why, so let's get into it. 13 Reasons Why is about Hannah Baker and it is about the 13 reasons why she killed herself. She recorded them on cassette tapes and then they have been mailed around to the people on her list. That is the basic synopsis for both book and TV show. In the book we just follow Clay and he does everything in one night and in the TV show we have 13 episodes and it takes you know like the course of two weeks. So I want to start this out on a happy note and just say I did enjoy the Netflix adaptation as a standalone piece. I don't necessarily think it really complements the book because of so many changes um, and if you've read the book then I guarantee you will have issues with the TV show but the one thing that I will say about the TV show is that the TV show will definitely reach a lot more people than the book did because it's just an easier form of media to consume and I really like the way they handled a lot of the situations that come up in the book. Like they really take care to make sure that what they're doing is how they should be portraying this stuff. And I really appreciate how they went around doing that. The TV show is very, very dramatic. <laughs> a little over dramatic to, for my tastes, but it had a lot of important messages and I would definitely suggest watching it. They also had a kind of behind the reasons thing where they explained you know why they did it how they did it and I agree with a lot of what they said on that where this is going to open up some important conversations and I think it's going to make a good impact on people you just have to sit down and watch it so there's that now I'm going to pick up my phone and go into the little rant that I promised in my little why I haven't been around video. I need my phone. It's going to be scattered. Also, by the way, we're getting into spoilers, possibly, um, for both book and show just because it's easier that way. So the biggest issue that I had with the adaptation wise was the efforts to make the show current which is, again, one of the big issues that I had with the adaptation of A Series of Unfortunate Events. A Series of Unfortunate Events is supposed to be undateable. The only real way you can date the books is the fact that they have electricity um, and they have a working telephone. That's the extent of it. Like, that's the only way that you can really date it. That's still decades worth of time. So for 13 Reasons Why, if you read in the back of this book, there's an interview with Jay Asher where he explains why he used cassette tapes. He used cassette tapes because for any form of media, the minute you use up-to-date technology, as in up-to-date, like you make it obvious that it is up-to-date technology, you are dating that piece. And anybody who reads it after that time when that technology has gone away it's going to date the book and it's not going to be as relatable so so there's the issue there for 13 reasons why he made he made it cassette tapes and he specifically made it so that cassette tapes were an old form of media that nobody used anymore so that you can't really date this book except for the fact that it took place after the 1980s. 1990s cassette tapes were kind of in still, but after the 1990s it's very rare now to see a, 
to see a stereo in the first place, but to see a stereo with a cassette player on it. So this book is still relevant. In the TV show, they add social media, they add iPhones. Every single one of the characters had an iPhone and they all had each other's numbers. Okay, I'm not even sure anybody had a cell phone in this book. Like Clay might have, because I think he calls his mom at some point, but I'm not 100% certain. Because when this book was written, they weren't really that big. This book was written in 2007. So another issue I have is when they go to Hannah's grave site, she was born in 2000 and died in 2017. I'm sorry. No, all of the characters in that show are older than me. They're supposed to be older than me. They were supposed to be born in like 1990 if she died in 2007. Like, up to date things. I don't, I don't, I don't like it when you take my old stuff and try to modernize it. It frustrates me. I like that Jay was on like the panel and stuff and he was there in that little behind the thing behind the reasons um so that like we know he's okay with it but at the same time like it still just irked me every time it was happening one thing that i will give the tv show is that the book isn't exactly written as interestingly or as fast paced or as dramatic it isn't as dramatic as the tv show so in order for the TV show to really work, they did have to do a lot of changes. So I understand the each tape is an episode thing. That was something I was like, they better do it that way. Like, there's no other way to do it. There better be 13 episodes, one tape for each episode. That's it. So they did that. The only problem is that in doing that, they took away from the fact that this is supposed to happen like overnight. He gets the tapes. He listens to them all in one night and then he mails them the next morning after like no sleep. But in the TV show, he watches one tape at a time. He goes and he confronts the person that the tape is about. Okay. And it takes him forever to get through the tapes. And Tony is kind of helpful in some places and then in other places. I'm just like, what the fuck are you doing, Tony? What the fuck are you doing, Tony? And I like that aspect because we actually got to see other characters. We got to hear them say their side of the story. I like the flashbacks. That was what I was hoping for. I was hoping for flashbacks. I was also hoping for more overlay with Hannah Baker's voice, but I really, I enjoyed the flashbacks. I like that they did that. I like that they gave us other characters points of view, kind of like it made it more interesting and more relatable because if you don't relate to Hannah or Clay, here are all these other characters that you can try to relate to. And that is good. That's really good. Just because I know I'm not, like I know we're not all gonna relate to those two characters. What the fuck is up with high schoolers and all those goddamn tattoos? Like, did you see Tony and Skye? Like, I'm sorry, are they even 18 yet? And Justin, in a flashback where he is supposed to be like a sophomore in high school has two tattoos. I'm sorry, what's going on there? Like, out of everything, that is one of the superficial things that bothered me the most. It's not the one thing that bothered me the most in the show, but that, that bothered me. That really annoyed me. I was just like, can you at least be accurate to like real life for a minute here? I really like the way that they did the diversity for like racial diversity. I thought it was done really well. It wasn't like just random or weird. Like as a cis white female, when I imagine characters in my mind, they all like me. Like that's just something that we all do. Even if you don't want to admit it, that's something that we all do. When we read something, all of the characters are going to relate. Like they're going to look like us or the people that we spend the most time with in some way, shape or form. Usually skin color, eye color, hair color. Like to me, Hannah was always a white girl with brown hair. Clay was a white boy with brown hair. All of the characters were white people with brown hair, maybe a couple blondies, but for the most part, white people with brown hair. So I really enjoyed the diversity. 
um, like, it kind of just fit the characters. Like, they didn't feel random. Like, it wasn't weird to have these racially diverse people. It was, it was, it fit. It fit very well, and I really like the way they did that. The gay characters were strange to me, um, just because they, they weren't in the book in any way like Courtney Crimson was not a lesbian in the book so they kind of just added that I mean along with the entire makeout scene because that didn't happen that annoyed me just a tiny bit like I don't mind it's not really that huge of a deal that's her secret but just the fact that like that's not what happened in the book Tony being gay was interesting um because in the book you really never would have seen that coming Tony's whole backstory was kind of interesting um, to just see little tidbits of him. So some of the changes I really liked. Some of the changes I was just kind of left wondering why did they decide to do that. So going with the tapes, they cut out like some of my favorite parts of the introductory, introduc introductory tape. Because when you're watching the show, he, Clay Jensen in the last episode hands the tapes to Mr. Porter and um and he says you can do whatever you want with these she never left instructions what to do with this and I just I just wanted to yell bullshit yes she did yes she did because I kind of enjoyed her little introduction like her little now why would a dead girl lie hey that sounds like a joke why would a dead girl lie answer because she can't stand up I'm almost, I almost forgot, if you're on my list, you should have received a map. You should have received a map. The map isn't in the box. You should have received it previously. It was stuck in his locker a couple weeks ago. Here's when you're done listening to all 13 sides, because there are 13 sides to every story. Rewind the tapes, put them back in the box, and pass them on to whoever follows your little tale. And you, lucky number 13, you can take the tapes straight to hell. Depending on your religion, maybe I'll see you there. She left very clear instructions for what number 13 was supposed to do. They changed the order of the tapes. Clay is number nine. Also, they changed her fucking poem. Jenny, not Sherry, it was Jenny. Anyway, I can't even figure out how they changed the order. I just know that they changed the order a bunch. Uh, Sherry was supposed to be a Jenny. That's why I couldn't remember Sherry, because Sherry didn't exist. I'm pretty sure Jeff didn't exist either. There was a student that was killed, but Clay's best friend Jeff is never mentioned. He was just added to make it a little more dramatic. They changed the snowball effect. It's not supposed to be a butterfly effect. I get the butterfly effect that, you know, one little thing can cause something huge somewhere else or later on, but it's supposed to be a snowball effect. Like this little thing picks up speed, keeps rolling, keeps getting bigger and adding on and adding on until it's huge and you can't see the end of it. The snowball effect. She says the snowball effect. It's a snowball effect. It's not a butterfly effect. Little things, little things that piss me off. Like, little things, you know? It's funny. They added a second rape. Like a second full on, full straight up rape because like, okay. So it's hard to differentiate really for me to make it, like it's still a serious situation. It's just not the same serious situation. So I don't wanna word it in a way that makes it seem like a lesser situation because it's not a lesser situation. It's just a different situation. They added a full-on like sex rape in the book it's not a full-on sex rape he fingers her in the hot tub um and that's the moment when she kind of just lets go and she gives up she's not saying yes she still said no it was still sexual assault it was still rape but it wasn't the same um and i don't i don't know if they could have done that justice in the show so I feel like they kind of had to do it the way that they did um, and it doesn't really bother me all that much it was just something that I noticed 
that they changed. It was another change that they made that I wanted to mention. That show was so dramatic. What the fuck was up with those foreign exchange students? Like, Clay just straight up started losing his mind. He was going through the tapes and he was confronting people and he was questioning things and he was literally going crazy. He was acting out, he was doing stupid things. He was seeing things, he was hearing things. He was just going crazy. And like, I feel like it was just a little, like the show was just so dramatic. It was just too dramatic for my taste. I don't really like things that are that over dramatic. Like I get the point that they were trying to get across, stuff like that, but still like, did he have to go completely crazy? So the last thing that I really want to talk about that annoyed the piss out of me the moment I realized it was happening was the fact that her parents were involved at all. Um, I understand why they were. I understand why they did that. This was to, you know, show the effects of suicide on everybody who could possibly be on all these people who could possibly be affected. And I know the point that they were going for with the show. They needed that. They needed the parents there. They didn't have a funeral, which I like that they kept that in the show. But her parents left town. Her parents left town immediately after she died, which I'm pretty sure they changed the way she died because I don't know if they really say it in the book. Um, but the only thing that I remember him ever saying anything was about like she swallowed a handful of pills or something. Like, so they cha they gave her a death and then they made her parents stick around and they gave them some lawsuit. And I'm just like, why? No, I get it, but no. Like, why? Oh, uh, why? Why can't why can't book to adapt book to TV show or book to movie adaptations actually follow the script of the book? Like, I get why they made all these changes because the book is not really written to be a TV show. Um, it's kind of more like a movie, but it's kind of too long to be a movie. But they could have done it as a TV show because I was talking to my boyfriend and he said something about 24 and I've never watched 24 but apparently the first season was a day. So they could have done that with this. They could have, you know, made it take place over the course of a night. But they didn't. And I see why. I under like, that's the frustrating thing about this is that this book meant so much to me and I wanted it to be done right. And it wasn't done the way I wanted it, but I understand why they changed it. I understand what they were going for. And I think they did a great job trying to get that message across, but I don't like it when people change my books. This is why I don't like adaptations. <laughs> this is why adaptations frustrate me because the first couple episodes of a series of unfortunate events were okay. But then like the last two books that they did, those last four episodes just like set me on a rampage almost. Um, so I don't plan on continuing with a series of unfortunate events because I am not happy with the way that the adaptation is going. I was watching a review for 13 Reasons Why, the TV show by somebody who hasn't read the book. Um, and she was mentioning some things that they did that could be a setup for a second season. There shouldn't be a second season. Like, if you're gonna make a second season, I feel like that's too much. Like, that's just a little too much because the only thing that they're going to do is go deeper into the other characters and into her parents. In a way, it could add to the story because we're going, we would get more in-depth things, we would get furtherations of the character arcs and the storylines and the emotional effects of horror suicide. 
but at the same time I'm just like no stop touching my thing you're breaking my thing you're 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 breaking my thing stop breaking my thing so I'm torn on how to feel about a lot of things that's pretty much my opinion of 13 Reasons Why, the Netflix adaptation. I enjoyed watching it for what it was, and I think that it will open up a lot of important conversations that people need to start having. But as an adaptation, I don't know how fully I agree with everything they did. I think it added a lot to the story that we can't get in a 300 page book but at the same time there are just certain things that I did not appreciate the addition of so that's it for this video if you have read the book and or watched the Netflix adaptation please let me know your thoughts I would love to get a conversation going about this kind of a topic it's an important topic to have conversations on to be open and honest about. So please, any any thoughts you have that you would like to share, I would love to talk with you in the comments. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can check out my next video. Have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye.